I know by now you're probably tired of listening to me talk about sheath underwear, but there's a reason for it. I wear them all the time. I'm wearing them right now. They're the most comfortable underwear I've ever had. And like I've said before, they have this pouch in the front for your balls. But guess what? If you're feeling weird about putting your balls in a pouch, use the pouch for other things. There's an array of different things you can put in there. For example, your wallet, hand sanitizer, your passport, a lighter, and some joints, a lemon, Mexican peyote muscle gel. The point is they're incredibly comfortable and convenient. And if you go to sheathunderwear.com and you can use my promo code RRBG, you'll save 20%. Go there right now, support the company, which is owned by a veteran and support us in the process. It's a win-win. Welcome everyone to the RRBG podcast. I'm here with my good friend, Peter Santa Maria, also known as Attack Peter. What's up, What's up brother? How's it going, man? I'm glad we're finally doing this. We tried That's to it. do this a while back when you were promoting your band, and yep. I lost all of the data. Okay, <laughs> I lost all of the band, so it's, it worked out perfectly. <laughs> it worked out. It was like a sign from the universe, like, don't worry yeah. about it. You don't yeah, need yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so funny because of all the bands I had ever been in, that was the fastest, the shortest amount of time spent with one, but it was also like the most efficient and productive one and the one that turned out the most lasting uh, material. Like, you know, Twice the Sun and even when we were kids and I, and I was doing Idle Minds, like there's not a lot of that floating around left over, you know? Yeah. And whatever it is is not great quality, whether it's video or audio or whatever. And so with Phantom Drive, you know, the music is like, documented super well a lot of it's on youtube the videos on youtube we shot a video like there's so much of it you know and it all kind of came and went in like a year but i think the best part of it was is i did a lot of things while in that band that i couldn't do or didn't get to do in the last two bands whether it was because of money or because of technology and i just got a chance to go you know what i'm gonna fucking put out 10 songs recorded in one band I'm going to shoot a video. I paid for it mostly myself, my brother and I, and uh, everybody chipped in. That's, that's not fair. Everybody chipped in, but we, we kind of funded it for the most part because I just wanted to put the pedal to the metal. And then we almost had, I thought, a shot at going a step further, and then I just didn't sense the enthusiasm from everybody, uh, all, all the members. And, you know, life was, was playing a part. And yeah. yeah. So, you know, it's all good. But it's, it's funny because when that was going on, Attack Peter as a brand and uh, as an art, you know, brand was was kind of like on pause for a minute, mm -hmm. and I just couldn't even think about doing art during that time. I was just interested in doing the music, and now it's kind of flipped the other way. Yeah, man, and and you know, for most people that that are tuning in that know you now, yeah, uh, know you know you because of your success with you know Skybound and everything you're doing, uh, may not know about the musical aspect right. and that and that it came first, you know, yeah, pr pretty much. Dude, it's so funny because the majority of the success I've had has been thanks to um, all of the lessons I learned um, growing up in a band in the music scene, which was so much more valuable than even I thought it was at the time. You know, it's like I thought it was everything in my world back then. You know, we, for those who don't know, like we were teenagers and growing up in the South Florida, Miami, Fort Lauderdale, uh, you know, Dade Broward, you know, music scene when it was like all kinds of new metal, then it was all kinds of hard. It was a weekend, you know, it was like a whole real life community around it. Everybody knew everybody, you know, you'd watch bands come and go and rise and fall and get signed. You know, we had non-point Dar Darwin's waiting room endo before that Marilyn Manson was big, although we were probably a little too young for that. Yeah. To it, like in its, in its uh, infancy. But the point was, it was everything and we were kids, but we were kids in a super man like in a man's world in an adult's world where i think we got taken advantage of for our naivety not in any weird pervy way just like you know as kids you know we got you know taken advantage of which was good we learned you know hardcore lessons you know yeah. we were taking meetings with fucking a and r guys and executives from labels like it was so fun because when we were doing twice the sun you know you were 
uh, you were there all the time. Like everything we did, you, we had, a, we had a bunch of friends who were like with us, no matter what we did, when we played a show, you guys were there. When, when, after the show, we would go and party. It was like the band had 25 members and then just like five of them played on stage at the time, you know, yeah. <laughs> then, yeah, yeah. but you guys saw it all. And it was so funny to think back at now I'm 37 and I'm just thinking like, dude, we did a lot of fucking crazy shit as kids and not much of it is like what you would associate with like you know, teenage debauchery. I'm, I'm talking about like we made, you know, uh, contacts with labels and went snuck backstage to meet the managers of other bands and hand out stickers and demos and produce merchandise. And like we ran businesses, dude. And we, we didn't even think of it like that back then. So now with Attack Peter as a, a brand, you know, that's kind of like born out of a unusual art style um, in the pop culture world, the only reason I think outside of the fact that people like the artwork, of course, the only reason I think I've been able to sustain people's interests and grow and get a larger platform is because I've taken all those lessons, like literally to uh, every lesson. Like, you know, you're the smallest band in the scene, try to get on a show, any show, with somebody who's bigger than you, even if it means 10 people at the show, because two people may have come out to see you, but now there's eight other ones who know about you. Cool. Next time you go, try to get on a bigger show. You'll be the opening band and an eight band bill. 15 people will see you, but that's five more than last time. And that's how I treated the convention circuit, meeting other, you know, companies, representatives. Dude, it's just everything has come full circle. And sometimes I take for granted that that was a rare experience you and I had when we were kids. Yeah, man. It's very rare. And it's it's getting rarer if that because uh, honestly, now, you know, kids my you know well how old were we 14 15 16 yeah. first time i was in, i played a show i was 15 years old yeah so at 15 kids these days have access to everything right you know you you have access to all the information you have a platform already ready to go you just all you got to sign up for tiktok or whatever it is mm -hmm. and you can you can make whatever you want but there is no there's none of that experience of of building it and and like having to work for it like that we got Right. It's weird. Uh, so the the content that's coming out, I mean, some of it's great, obviously, but some of it's not that great because people just don't have that life experience that, you know, we had. I think that's part of it. I also think that content now is fleeting where it's where it's like, think yeah. of like, think of this, man. Like we used to ride around with CD wallets in our cars and it was like if you had a small CD wallet, for example, and like a one disc CD player in your car. Mm -hmm. You had to be really choosy of what albums you brought because that's all you're going to get to listen to. You know what I mean? And so yeah. now it's like you have everything at your disposal at all times. Nothing is that sacred just based on the, the numbers. You know what I mean? Not that it's not important to you, but it's like everything's available all the time. Like every like the world's changed in such a way that that's what I'm talking about now. Back then it was like how do I work on my craft enough that when I get a platform – it will matter, and now it's like, okay, work on your craft all you want, and you have a platform at any point, you know, anytime you want. How do you stay relevant and matter from one day to the next, one hour to the next, one minute to the next? Because as cynical as it sounds, people like to poo-poo the, the algorithms and this. It's, it's, it is what it is, man. It is what it is. Like, that's the world that we live in now, and you can just be like, man – uh, you know, uh, you better turn post notifications on or comment and see, tell me if you can see this post because Instagram's fucking with you. Dude, like you got to play the game like that we are in until you don't have to. Until yeah. you don't have to. You know what I mean? Um, so with kids now, I feel like I'm trying to pay attention to how they're moving and how they're, you know, paying attention to things. And it's fleeting. It's everything is fleeting. Everything lasts, you know, short amounts of time. Um, th something's popping off every second. Platforms don't matter as much. Like TikTok is already starting to feel old. And now yeah. people talk about Clubhouse. You know what I mean? So it's like the platform, everything is ephemeral. And so the only thing, the, the one thing, again, to circle back around that I remember from when we were kids is there were so many shitty bands that when we were kids, they got tons of people coming out to their show. And I think the reason why was because they were building community around the product. So 
one band there was so many great local bands and that no one would go see right and then there were shitty ones that everybody would go see and by shitty i just mean like you know whatever mm-hmm. it's because they were throwing a party every time they had a show and they were the band at the party yeah now with attack peter i'm trying to take that notion where we have these live streams every thursday that are really just a hang they're just a hang like last night we had an artist uh, who goes by Dope Pope on uh, on online, and he is like a super realistic digital sculptor, and, and he designs toys, and uh, his stuff has been like you know confused for the concept art for big Godzilla movies. I mean, the guy's like you know on another level. And last night we just had him on the stream. We were talking about his work, and and we had a bunch of people in the in the chat, and it was just a hang. It was just a hang. But now when I go and I drop a new print, like I'm going to drop next Thursday. The only way to get the print is to come to the hang and you don't have to buy something at the hang. You could just be there for the hang because we don't always sell stuff. It's not about buying and selling stuff, but when we do, it's at the hang. And so that's what I'm trying to figure out. Like if everything is an option, if you could go anywhere and be anywhere at all times, how do I make it that you choose my hang? Right. Right. Yeah. That's what we learned when we were kids at those shows, I think. Yeah. Yeah. It, that's uh, it, that's the commodity, right? Your yeah. time. Your yeah. time is a commodity. How do you get people to give you their time? Yes. And uh, that is definitely 100%. Like, it's that community aspect. That, that's what, you know, any success that my band saw was that. It was that we had house parties, and there was 100 kids there just hanging out. You know, there was a few bands. We would do other things, too. Like, we would have people painting. We would have people fighting in the backyard. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but it was that. It was building a community. And, you know, to to a degree, that's that's what these social media platforms are about. It's yeah. supposed to be about community. But uh, but if there is no, I, I don't know, I, I feel that the physical attraction is there. Like, you need to be there. Yeah. And, uh, you know, the Twitch thing helps, especially during these, you know, times of the pandemic and whatnot. Uh, but yeah, that, how do you get people to tune into your Twitch? That's the thing people should be focusing on. Obviously, your content is important. You can't just yeah. have people come watch you play video games and you don't say a word, you know what I mean? I've seen that too. I've seen people like, hey man, come check me out on my Twitch. Yeah. And then I tune in and they're just there like, Right, it's a plot and like anybody can do that. And maybe some people enjoy that. But then if anybody can do that, the amount of people that enjoy that are divided up about amongst everybody who can do that. Yeah. So it's on you as a content creator, you know, an artist, a musician, whatever, to figure out something that not anybody can or that not everybody will do and then promote that. You know what I mean? Like promoting for the sake of promoting is hollow. It's nothing, you know, it's like you got to have a reason, you know, you have to respect people's time. The fact that they're coming and hanging with you there. Well, they could be doing fucking anything else like, you know, and yes, we're in a pandemic and yes, there's less to do, but maybe this is the time people are getting closer to their families. Maybe people have developed new routines in their life that you're pulling them away from. Mm -hmm. And, uh, to go to what you said about the fact that this doesn't replace physical hangs and all that. The thing is that I fully intend that when this, when the world opens back up, we're going to continue to do our show online, you know, whether that means there'll be people physically in the studio with us, uh, sometimes remote and whether that means that we'll do physical appearances at cons and host a show at a con sometimes do a panel, whatever, but the show goes on. Now it just has another layer to it, but we started in the pandemic. Like we started the show in the pandemic as a way, because I was doing physical cons all the time. I had done Comic Con and Designer Con in in California, did five points in New York, did all over Florida. So I was like, fuck, how are we going to connect with people now that we can't? Well, this is the least that we can do. And now it's turned into like the, the, the cornerstone of what, of what we're doing. And I think everybody who's producing content needs to figure this shit out. So, you know, because we're on a music show, I was, uh, paying attention to alien and farm and I, uh, over the pandemic and they put out a really kick-ass song. I know they were working on a new album before the pandemic. Um, you know, and I had talked, we were talking about doing some artwork for them at one point and, uh, it didn't pan out. And, um, and the, so I started hearing and seeing stuff that they were working on before they put it out. And then when the pandemic hit, I just forgot all about it. And then, so it came up on my YouTube music notifications, They put out the song and the video and a bunch of bands are doing this, right? Where they're getting videos made of like people jamming to their music, sending it in and big collage. 
But that's yeah. cool. It's cool. It's like it's kind of showing perseverance that we're going to like still do what we want to do uh, when everything's fucked up. And when we come out of it, man, are we going to enjoy some shows? Oh, yeah. man. Oh, yeah. And I see it a lot uh, just driving around when I go out now, uh, you know, seeing gyms outside, people with their gym equipment outside, uh, rooftop, you know, yoga classes and shit like that and food vendors. It really does show the perseverance of humanity. Like, yeah, the world may be falling apart, but we're not going anywhere. Like, we're just going to figure out a way around it. And I think the the, the Twitch streaming, like the show that you're doing with Attack Peter, uh, keeping it going after is is awesome because you're now you've added something on top of your, I guess, brand or whatever. Yeah. You have now a new thing that that. It, it opens up new doors because now it's more it's normal it's normalized that right. uh that people uh communicate this way right. there's a lot of times before like I, with my for example the podcast like i wanted to have certain people on the show and it was like man eh, i don't really like doing skype i was know? just gonna ask you that question so go, go continue no yeah is that like basically like a lot of people are like no nah, i don't want to do skype i don't want to do skype and now it's like well, now i can have whoever i want because everybody's like this is all we have i was you just know? gonna ask you has your guests like the ability to get guests changed during the pandemic yeah Definitely. right 100 yeah. percent. yeah well, that's what i'm well, hoping changes after this too is like that we've normalized this as a way of communicating people realize it isn't the fucking you know i don't know what was in people's minds before like the people who have social anxiety about being on camera or whatever it is but now that we've done it so many times and everybody's done it and I, I wonder if enough people who were hesitant before will feel better about it and just make it a normal part of doing because it's cool man i love it dude like you've had a killer lineup in the last year thank you man yeah right? I've, uh, yeah i've been i've been lucky been real lucky that you know people want to do it uh there's pr people are now on board with it as well because that's usually where i get a lot of the guests it's just pr people hit me up and they're like hey you want to meet up with this guy at the studio and whatever and it's like yeah that's cool but you know now that we have this it's just tons easier. Now it's just getting some of the older guests to figure out how to use the technology. Yeah. <laughs> like I, I, you know, I had, uh, I think I had like Bill from Mastodon on and he was, this was at, at the beginning kind of, oh, okay. and he, he still hadn't really, he's like, I've never used Skype. I've never used it. I don't know how it works. I'm like, it's not that hard. Just, you know, sign up, do, do your yeah. thing. Um, but yeah, I think little by little, everybody's adapting and, you know, and I'd like it. I'd like to see it keep going. Uh, like bands are putting out, uh, concert streams that are super high produ yes. uh, produced, like, you know, beautiful lighting and, yeah. like, I'll keep going with that. Yes, go back to doing shows. Ones. Yeah, the 311 ones they did recently were so cool. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Go back and do shows, but this also is cool. Yeah. Because yeah. if you think about it, think about this, when we were kids, I would buy, and I say when we were kids, because this is just the times, I would remember going to Uncle Sam's in the beach, which was like a record store, you know, when there was like independent record shops, and buying bootleg videos of bands on tour. And I had bootleg videos of Korn, bootleg videos of 311, bootleg because somebody just stuck a camera and filmed it all. Yeah. And that was because nobody would tour to Miami back then, if you remember. It was always like Orlando and making a U-turn. And so like to see a lot of bands, it, that was the only way to do it. How cool is that? Like if you, you can still tour, you can still do your shows, but on top of that, like maybe, Two, three times a year, you do a big, super well-produced live concert like that. I think it's awesome. Yeah, no, it's great. It's great. And I love what you're doing, man. The, the whole thing of having a hangout and, and revealing prints, like it gives an, an air of excitement to anybody that's following your art. Yeah. So tell me a little bit about the art and how you ended up with, with Skybound. So for people that aren't too familiar, you know, we were, we were talking now a lot about music and everything. Like Peter and I met in Miami through the music scene. And then, uh, then like years later, I see you at a con and you're doing art. And I'm like, holy shit. And it's, yeah. you know, it, it was great. And uh, little by little, you started developing your style because yeah. some of your earlier artwork, it, doesn't, it wasn't wood uh, carvings. Um, I was doing prints. like, I was doing a little bit of everything from the first, like 2012, I did my first show and I had paintings, I had digital art and I had a few uh, block prints. Which are for people who don't know, like you know, I, I carve a piece of linoleum. It's like a leathery material, and then so I carve a design into it, roll ink on the design, and then I put paper on to print it. Uh, you can check out my YouTube channel, Tack Peter, and you'll see like some videos of how I do that. Um, the point is, it was just a bunch of stuff that I liked. I wasn't sure what was gonna stick, and when I did my first show, that definitely 
and the paintings I was doing sold really well. Little by little, I kept adjusting the ratio, some more paintings, some less paintings, more print block prints. And eventually, like because of my lifestyle, really, I was on the move so much as a teacher. I taught for 13 years and that I would have to like, you know, pick up my materials, set it up, work, tear it down, pick up, move to another classroom, pick up, set it up, pick it, pick, you know. And so eventually I realized I, art uh, painting is not going to work because it's too much set up and tear down. Carving a little block is easy. You just get a tool to carve with and the actual material and you can just pick it up and go. And that's what really informed my decision to focus on that. Then doing that more and more and more, um, I, I started to figure out how to present that work better, working on these big prints that when I'm at a convention, you can see my work from a distance. And it was hard to call people over to the booth that wouldn't normally, because it's, you know, it's the same thing at a convention. It's like, how do you get people's attention with so many people around? You got to present it a certain way. But um, it was just essentially a novel approach. Look, it's a super old medium printmaking people have done it since you know ancient japan and medieval times you know but it's not common in pop culture and yeah. so when you take something out from outside the world that you're in and bring it in then you kind of get like a new mix a new blend something interesting and that is uh i think what what really helped me stand out on top of that my drawing style is very different um it's not even co it's not common for printmakers. So my drawing style, like the way I illustrate, is more influenced by you know Jack Kirby, Mike Mignola, so comic book artists like that. You know, I, I look at a lot of old uh, artwork from Thailand and Japan, and that kind of blends in with it. And so mixing that stuff together, a different art form, and then just hustling, doing different shows every year, setting up, uh, meeting new people, you know, that kind of stuff. So like like the, again, like the old mentality of flyering for a show. You know, mm -hmm. you want people to show up, you got to go to five shows one weekend. You're not playing any of those shows, but you bring a shit ton of flyers. You're handing it out, talking to everybody. And that means your next show is going to be a little more full. So same thing. And uh, with Skybound, what happened was after about eight years of doing the convention circuit, I decided to uh, make seven years. I, 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 well, I was encouraged by my good friend, Brian Ewing, who's a great artist, uh, who actually you should have on your show because he does gig posters. For every band that you can imagine, the best Misfits posters I've ever seen. Like it's right up your alley. I'll, nice. I'll you guys up. Um, he he told me like you're not gonna like take the next step in notoriety until you get out of Florida and start doing shows in California, New York. That's where everybody goes, you know. Yes. And I hated hearing shit like that. Like why, you know, we have the internet now, but it's true. As soon as I did that, I, I did my first show in California and at Designer Con. And uh, I, I got the attention of Sideshow Collectibles mm -hmm. and uh, Super 7. Both of those companies literally at the same time were at my booth asking if I want to work with them. And that put me on the map. I did uh, some He-Man designs for Super 7. They put on shirts. I did um, a Spider-Man and a uh, print for Sideshow. And that was an officially licensed print. Put me on the map there. Then everything just snowballed and snowballed until I got... Um, I won a, a, a grant from a nonprofit company that I met at DesignerCon in California. To to a t it's called uh, uh, the Kevin Workman Foundation. They're from California out there, and they sponsored me to go to Comic Con in San Diego. Nice. And so they basically like I had to go through like a candidate system, and they chose me. I got my flight paid for, my booth paid for, all you know, all that. They they really took care of me. And at Comic Con in San Diego. Is where I got the attention of Skybound. Uh, the CEO of the company, David Alpert, walked by my booth. I didn't know who he was. You know, they're not like known faces. These people usually. He uh, liked my booth. I was swamped. I could barely talk to him. He just gave me his card, super nice, and just kept walking. Then I got called back to to see if I'd be interested in working on a project with them. And it it was a really cool project, but I was so busy at the time, and it wasn't like exactly what I wanted to do. Like at the time, I would if they would have said do something for Invincible, I would be like, fuck yeah, I love Invincible. But this was like a different project that may still happen. And I'm like, oof, I love to do it, just can't right now. I'm kind of busy. And I, I told him no. I turned him down, which was like going back. I'm like, you fucking idiot. Like you almost ruined everything. <laughs> but I didn't know, you know, I didn't know what was going on. So. Thanks to them, they 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 persisted and they came to see me at Designer Con the next year. And at the booth, we talked. You know, they sent a few representatives, some great people. 
uh, who I still work with today. Uh, shout out Sean Kirkham, Garima, Sharma, and Paul Shin. They uh, came out to see my booth. They had just awesome things to say, very complimentary. I didn't know what the pitch was, but after the con, they basically said, hey, man, so we're not really looking to get you to do a gig now at this point. We kind of just want you to be a part of Skybound. And I'm like, what? Now, the, we have to remember, this is a great place to talk about this because there's a total like analogy for this. Like, As a musician, your whole goal is to get, well, back then, to get signed to a record label. The record label does all the work for you so you can focus on the music, and then they help to promote you, put you on tour, do all the stuff that you ha need done so that you could just focus on the craft. Now, whether that's always the case of what happens, we know stories of good and bad experiences, but most bands that we know and love have had decent experiences with a record label because they're still on them. Um, and I know that's an archaic business model now, but that's that was the norm for a long time. So now I kind of in a I'm in a similar situation, not exactly, but I attack Peter as a brand is a part of Skybound now. So like just the way that the Skybound has Walking Dead and Invincible and the Schmodown. You're are you a Schmodown fan by the way? I feel like that's I right up your alley. I haven't checked it out. No. You know what it is? No. Oh, dude, you would love this. It's uh, basically a wrestling league, but instead of actual wrestling, it's movie trivia. And, dude, John Schnepp was, uh, was like, always on that shit. Uh, Robert oh. Myronette. It's Christian Harloff and the Collider, you know. I feel like I know the name. You do. Uh, S -S -S -E. I, I guarantee if I send it to you, you'll recognize it. But you okay. do. It is built for you. You would love this shit. <laughs> They got heels and like heroes and intro music and all that. But anyway, sidebar, uh, check it out. So, you know, Skybound has de decided as a, like an entertainment company to start not only doing comics and animation and TV, but they are also like they have me as an artist, as a brand. They have Christian Harloff and Schmodown as a brand. And they, like we're all under the Skybound umbrella. They do all the stuff for us, you know, like, you know. Everything from negotiate uh, gigs with uh, different partners. So, like, if I want to do a uh, recently, I did a, a project for with TMNT. I did four uh, Ninja Turtle prints, and that was with Nickelodeon. I am eight bit. Normally, if that gig presents itself, I have to stop working on my stuff to get on the phone and talk to their lawyers and work out the financials and all this kind of, and, it, and it's cumbersome and tedious, and it takes you out of the mindset. But with Skybound, they handle stuff like that. They design, um, you know, all my YouTube branding. They, they'll design, you know, all my merchandise. I just give them the artwork and, and they put it. So they do everything for me so that all I have to do is just make art. And that made total sense for me as someone coming from a music background. Sure, yeah. But when I explain it to artists, it's still kind of strange because you can be super successful on your own independently yeah. but i feel like this model is so new and novel that and it's worked out so well for me and continues to do so i love talking about it because i think this is kind of the future for artists who are like on the cusp you know like i've been doing this for like 10 years already but the first eight years did not move as fast as the last year and a half have moved sure and that's yeah. because they've kind of like put that uh, tailwind behind me and helped me, you know, clear my path for me so I can just make the work. So it's awesome, man. So it's, it's been a blessing. So it, it makes perfect sense with the music analogy, the whole music label thing. It, it, when you're focused on all of the other business shit, it, you, you can't, it's too oh. much. You get spread too thin, you know, and that, that's kind of what. Uh, usually when you're in a young band growing up, like there's always one guy in the band doing that. You know what I mean? Like the whole band doesn't really, like they're doing the music and then there's one dude, that was me in December. Like I'm designing t-shirts. I'm trying to help out with, you know, book shows. Obviously the other guys book some shows too sure. here and there, but you know, there, there has to be one person to take charge of, of, of all of the business ends of, of things. Right. And when you have like a skybound helping you out with that, you know, it's, it's amazing to be able to just focus all of your time on your art. And that's 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 the dream, right? You know? It's amazing, and it's. I honestly think that for creators to do their best work, you gotta give them space, and that space is not just like physical space, but like the headspace, you know? Because it sucks, man. Like I don't like typing up an email blast. Like one thing I put off forever, for example, was creating a newsletter which is super beneficial, super helpful. 
and everybody told me you got to get a newsletter, got to get an email. I'm like, Fuck, I don't even want to mess with the software or whatever. And yeah. I don't have to do that, you know? And the other thing about it is like, you know, you could be cynical and say, that sounds like a, like a, like a deal with the devil. Like you're trading part ownership and part this and part that and, and all that. But yeah, but this is a company founded by like Robert Kirkman, dude. Mm -hmm. who is one of the the guys who sits on the board at Image Comics, dude, yeah. that was started by McFarlane and, you know, all those guys. Th these are people who know what it means to be a creator and to suffer abuses um, as a people treating you like a, like a for-hire employee, you know? These are people who respect creator rights. They respect, you know, IP and, and putting the creator the creative at the center of this amazing machine they've built so they put me in the center and they say hey you know you need help with prints we got the contact for that send us the artwork oh you want you need to get on some youtube stuff we got that for here oh you need help with you know everything they have everything going on around the creator versus taking a creator and trying to like you know, see what they can squeeze out of them before they run out. It's amazing, dude. And that's part of it, too. Like, when I decided to do this, I'm like, well, fucking trust Robert Kirkman, dude. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's not like it's a bunch of suits, like some yeah. kind of, you know, people trying to make money, investment, you know, what are they called? Uh, the conglomerates of people just trying yeah. to put money into something. Right. Like, these are actual artists. Yeah. People that have actually done it before. And and it's apparent when you go to the Skybound website, dude, you're right there. Like, yeah. you're... You're like, you scroll down, it's like, okay, the board games, and then yeah. boom, attack okay. Peter. Yeah. It's crazy. Like, uh, there's emails that go out that blow my mind because they have this, like, when they send you an email newsletter, at the bottom, they have, like, all their brands. And in the top row, it says, Walking Dead, Invincible, Attack Peter, Schmodown. And I'm like, what the fuck? Dude, <laughs> I can't talk about it just yet. When is this going to air? Uh, it'll be a couple weeks. A couple weeks. Might be still a little early. I can't talk about it just yet, but something's coming out this month. The, it's not the biggest thing I've ever done, but in a way, it is far surpassed what I ever expected to be able to do. And I'll tell you off air about it. But and and then I'll. But and the point is, like, if not for Skybound, I wouldn't be able to do this. And uh, if you want to talk about it? Talk about it, and I'll hold this until it's out, or until you can talk about it. I'll put it out after. No, 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 no. I'm all. It's all good. I'll. I'll, I'll okay. well, yeah, yeah. But uh, right. it's like it's because it's because because of this amazing team that I was able to do this thing. And, and, and when it comes out, we'll talk about it again or something, but yeah, it's coming soon. Well, that's good, man. It's good to hear that there are companies that are focused on the artist by the artist. Yeah. Um, you know, some, some music labels these days are doing that too. There's yeah. a few like smaller labels that are helping out and they help uh, put out records. They help with the social media stuff is that it's super important. And I guess, you know, not that not to to say that this is what you're gonna do or what you should do, but Attack Peter is one thing for you. Like it's the it's the it's this style, right? It's the the, the linoleum cutout. So if you were to like make another brand that wasn't Attack Peter, which you probably won't, because I mean you've been doing Attack Peter for years now. It's it's right. been your personality. You were Attack the Planet before, right? That's a funny thing, yeah. Like the, the name doesn't have any meaning other than the fact that it was one half of my buddy Brian and I had decided to like, build a, a company together called Attack the Planet, and we each got the emails, like, which is very inspired by like punk rock stuff, you know, like Attack Peter, Attack, you know, Brian, yeah. and uh, which is like you know Kevin Seconds and shit like that, <laughs> like like taking the name of the band and putting. But the point, yeah, it it just came from that. The thing is, like, that's what I'm trying to figure out now, Eddie, is like, what is the brand going forward? Because you know, eventually the audience will expand so that if I'm putting out a new limited edition print or some merch or whatever, that the audience is there for that. But I don't think that's enough for me. Like, uh, I one ask, one facet of my personality that always comes through is I like meeting and engaging and helping to get other people like to their next step. It's like always been in me, you know, since the band days as a teacher, I had that feeling. And so now one of the things that I'm working on is figuring out how to make attack Peter a platform for other artists too. Like, um, so, you know, we just launched, um, a pre-order for the first ever attack Peter figure. Uh, mm -hmm. and it's a Daruma. Um, do you edit stuff in here or do you want me to get it? I have it right here. 
I can edit. Okay, put yeah, you can put that in here. Okay. Uh, so the the Ruma like is a design that I created live on a stream. You know, carved it live on a stream. The addition size of the prints was only available to people in the chat. I didn't tell them ahead of time, and then that design kind of like you know found itself on T-shirts and hats and stuff like that. And then we behind the scenes turned it into the first ever like attack peter vinyl figure which is coming out in partnership uh with skybound and mighty jacks um so that made me think like this design of a daruma is a old design you know i mean i i definitely reinterpreted it but it's something that's existed forever and it's something i've seen other artists do and i'm thinking like it might be a good time to launch a platform where i could say hey my you know five ten artist friends uh, that I that I'm talking to right now. Why don't you guys each do a take on Daruma, and like we'll la launch an Attack Peter series of prints that I didn't draw or design. It's just like I launched it, and it's like imagine having like ten kick-ass artists doing a Daruma, and you could collect the whole series of the prints. Maybe one of those gets turned into a figure, something like that. But it's just an opportunity for me to curate something and promote stuff that i like like a really high level show and tell and then hopefully for some of them it's like their first shot at a big stage of something eventually you know what i'm saying so like that's yeah. what i think the brand is going to grow into it's like a place where i can do all my stuff but as long as anybody's paying attention it could be a place where i could show off and, and introduce people to other kick-ass artists doing kick-ass stuff i hope so yeah right? yeah yeah so the, the rumor that you have is huge right i saw yeah. you holding it it's like the no, size I'm of your head pause yeah, yeah. Should have had it with me before the stream. Forgot. <laughs> here's a here's a regular size Daruma, right? Like, I mean, yeah. they come in all shapes and sizes, to be honest. But here's one that I have that was like a pretty common size when I was in Japan. I bought this one, and uh, this is the one that we're putting out, so you can see. Jesus, <laughs> so much bigger. It's awesome. Dude, it's crazy. Um, this thing is massive. It comes with a base too. This is the prototype, but it'll come sitting on a base, and the base has like flowers and like wind swirls around it but this thing is massive it's a prototype that they sent me to kind of like just see it in hand get a sense of the size and detailing and all that kind of stuff but um the target date for it to come out is uh late april so um when it comes out it'll be you know super nice packaging and like uh you know the whole official deal i saw the packaging oh, I, I showed the packaging on my stream you know what's funny when I, it, it messed me up when I was looking. I'm like, it has a fucking barcode on it. I'm like, whoa, it's so official. <laughs> I felt that when the when the band put out our first CD and it had the barcode. I'm like, oh yeah. shit, it's not real. <laughs> Why does that matter so much? We're so. <laughs> but dude, so you know that concept you brought up is is a good a good idea because it kind of makes me think of like the Dunnies. Mm -hmm. You know how Dunnies do like a series and they have, you know, 15 variants of whatever it is. Yeah. You could have like smaller, you know, since the room is huge, yeah. you can have small Darumas yeah. from different artists that are going out through that. And then you just come up with a whatever the next, you know, Daruma is yeah. one thing. But um, was there any kind of complication with, uh, I, I don't really know anything about no. this, but just like licensing or just being able to do a Daruma since it's something that exists. Is there any, no, uh, no, is that, that owned by anybody? No, 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 no. Yeah, that's that's one of the cool things about it. Like a Daruma is, nobody owns that. It's like, uh, I don't know. It's like iconography, cultural iconography. I mean, somebody could come out and try to like cancel me for like cultural appropriation or some shit, oh. I guess. But <laughs> that's that's the most I can think about. No, no, no. It's it's not like anything that's owned by anyone. And plus, I've really like in reinterpreted to the point where it almost barely resembles a, a Daruma. You know, I've added a lot of texture and scaling that I use on, on my uh, artwork. I, I gave him two big underbite tusks that uh, kind of like – as a, uh, a nod to Gamera, one of my favorite giant monsters of all time. And so, uh, you know, a lot of stuff like that. And, and again, it's, it is, uh, it's a symbol of accomplishing something like, and, and accountability, the Daruma, you know, t technically it comes with two blank eyes. This one will come with one eye filled in, but they traditionally will come with two blank eyes. And the idea is that you get one of these 
um, when you're like, you know, to simplify it, like when you're about to set a goal for yourself of some kind, you know, and when you set the goal, you color in one eye. So like this one, for example, my, uh, my wife, Gabby and I decided we were going to get a house. We're, we're going to work really hard to buy a house, you know, mm-hmm. and save up and find all that crazy shit. So they had two blank eyes. We colored in the first eye when we set that goal. And when we finally moved in and, you know, are living in this new place, we colored in the second eye. And now it sits, you know, when it's got one eye colored in, it sits on your shelf and people would come over, you hang, have company over and they see it, they go, oh, what is it that you're trying to achieve, you know? And uh, it's like a people who know and what it means, it's like a conversation starter and it's accountability. Like people know your, now your community, your family know you're trying to do something. So you got to do it now, right? And uh, when you accomplish it, you put, put the second eye colored in, you put it on your shelf and now it's a trophy for what you accomplished. You know, you're supposed to eventually burn them, but I'm not going to burn this guy. <laughs> yeah, it's a, that's that's a great. I, I was going to ask you, like, do you, what's what's the story behind it? Because I've never I've seen them around. Obviously, yeah. you see them at stores, and yeah, and I love. I'm a I'm a I'm a fake weeb, so I'm always at like Japanese markets and yeah. So you see them. Uh, yeah, I see them all the time. And that's, and that's why I wanted to choose that as our first, you know, figure launch because it is so much of what Attack Peter has been for me. It's like. You know, I didn't have like a lot of people, you know, who understood what I'm doing and how to coach me on it. This seemed really difficult when I used to go to conventions when I was a kid, you know, even go to Comic Con like in my early, you know, like I was 20, 21 years old. I remember meeting everybody like, oh, if you want to, you know, be successful, you have to leave Miami. You can't be an artist in Miami. It doesn't exist. And, you know, a lot of shit like that, like what I was like thinking, like, oh, this is never going to happen. I, you know, the world's against me. How am I going to do it? You know, my drawing style is not traditional. I'm not going to be marketable in comics and blah, blah, blah. And so the fact that I just kept pushing without knowing exactly where I was going. And now I'm in a situation where I, this is what I do for a living. It's, it's the Daruma is a perfect kind of symbol of that. Like keep pushing. So this Daruma, you're not supposed to ever color in the eye. You know, it's, it's like supposed to just stay unfinished forever. And that way, to me, at least it kind of symbolizes you know, an, an, uh, your personality forever is to, you know, get after Keep working. It. Wow. Yeah. Yes. The never ending goal. You know what I mean? Grind. That's it. You know, and I feel like that's a super, super important thing for me to remember. Like, you got to keep going. Can't get comfortable. Yeah. Yeah. That's what that's what differentiates people like regular, I guess, consumers, consumers from the artist itself, like that drive, that grind to do something and keep pushing. You, you have to do something like that if you want to. That's if you know if that's the lifestyle you're, you want to have. Obviously, yeah. there's people that are comfortable with their nine to fives and their family and their dog and whatnot. But I, I, I'm not like that. And, you know, and yeah. it, it, we came like we've talked about in the very beginning, like we come from that same core group of friends. Like I, you know, we all inspired each other like I, you yourself personally, man, like I remember going to your house at one point, um, I, I, I don't even remember how many years ago, but it was a long time ago. And you had a bunch of uh, pictures of you with like the people you admired. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I had on your wall. concerts and take pictures with the bands and all that. Yeah. Yeah. So I remember seeing that wall of you with all of the, the musicians and, and that almost like it subconsciously inspired me to do the same. Like I was huh. like, man, I, I want to meet. Yeah, the people that I admire and and I want to grow and learn from them. Yeah. And that's the lesson I took from that. And, you know, you didn't even know you were doing that, but you did that. (laughs) Great, man, because like, you know, I, I really believe, you know, first of all, you know, I think anybody who wants to be successful in something that they love, whether it's the arts or not, you know, it's hard. And if it wasn't hard, it wouldn't be that big of a deal. We wouldn't be talking about it, you know. There, there are life paths that are, you know, met with li- less resistance. And then there are those that are super challenging. And if you want something that's really tough, then yeah, that mentality is what you have to have that get after it mentality. But, you know, my, I've realized more so as, you know, spending time as a teacher for 13 years, how impactful your life is to others, whether you mean it or not. Like sometimes I don't want that responsibility, but I knew when I was teaching kids, especially like younger kids, like everything you say, everything you do, every time you come in in a bad mood or good mood, whatever, it's so impactful. And the funny thing is I noticed that it really continues to be the case even with adults. And I'm happy even if I don't feel like, you know, every day I wake up, I'm like, this shit's going to end tomorrow. 
Like this is too, <laughs> you know, I really feel like, like, like I'm not ever securely in place. Like it's just all, it's always going to just fit, you know, something's going to go wrong or something. So I'm very grateful for it. And I know that a lot of the difficulty I had getting here and the reason I think it's going to always disappear is because like there was a lot in my way to get here. And, and I'm very grateful for the people like my family and my close friends growing up and some mentors I had along the way who kind of in directly and indirectly encouraged me. But also there, I'm very grateful for the people who try to sh shit on me and shut me down and made me feel like an asshole for doing what I wanted to do. You know, I used to get made fun of for those pictures. You know that? Like I had a big group. Oh, of, yeah. I had a group of friends that would make fun of me for like caring so much that I met Limp Bizkit and Corn and Deftones. And I'm like, I don't care. I like this. I, you know, fuck off. And yeah, you're but, a but punisher, I, bro. Yeah. I'm punishing yeah. the bands. Yeah, like I don't, I don't give a shit, dude. I don't fucking care. And you know what? Those bands, like I look back now, I'm like, thank God for some of them, dude, because some of them were fucking lunatic assholes. I should never have been around as a kid. But then some of them were like, dude, 311 was one of the nicest bands I ever met. You know, I think my I camera. Lost your video, yeah. Uh, it, it just turned. Oh, it's like there it is. Uh, I got, I got to meet 311 um, when I played Warp Tour one year. And Tim Mahoney, who was like one of my fucking heroes growing up, you know, and Peanut, you know, those guys. And I used to like learn guitar by trying to play what they were playing. And so we were backstage after the show that we got to play and they were there. And I, you know, Tim Mahoney, at, we were around the keg and he goes, hey, can you, you know, you know, hit me up? You know, he had his empty cup. And I'm like, oh, shit. You know, so nervous. Tommy was there. And uh, we're we're pumping. I go to pump the keg, and I had never pumped a keg before. I've, I've drank out of a keg, but I never pumped one. So I didn't even pump the fucking keg. I just grabbed the hose and filled his cup up with foam. And in that <laughs> moment, I thought, like, oh, he's going to fucking think I'm a douchebag and an idiot. And he's like, oh, no, it's all good, man. Just give it a couple pumps, man. And, like, you know, like, he didn't embarrass me. He just kind of, you know, cool. And then we talked about everything. And, and like, little things like that. That guy's not going to remember that. But for me, that was a moment that just trained me. Like, don't you don't have to be a dick. You don't have to be protectionist. You don't have to be a gatekeeper. You don't have to be fucking, you know, threatened by other people. Like, you could just be cool and still be successful and and push other people. And it feels good. Like, that's what I like to do. You know, I'm happy to see my friends succeed because I don't want to enjoy this on my own. I you know, the more success I get, the more I look around and go, who can I party with? Right. You know, that's how I think about think about it. Yeah, it's funny because, you know, like you said, you're appreciative of that. Because yeah. I, I am, too. I'm, I'm a, I appreciate whenever somebody talks shit yeah. because it gives me that drive. They're like, I'm going to prove you wrong. Yeah. Oh, you think so, huh? Okay. <laughs> All right. Yeah. So like, look at, look at the, you know, and I, I'm, I'm not trying to boast. I'm not that type of person, but like, look yeah. at the show. Yeah. You know, because I used to do the same thing after I saw that wall of pictures, I, I got inspired to like, fuck it. I want to do that. Yeah. And I, as I kept doing that over the years and I would have this collection of like, Oh, I met this guy and I met that guy. Yeah. And then now I'm friends with a lot of these people yeah. because of the show, because that's, yeah. I wanted to meet them in person. I wanted to talk to them. I wanted to learn from them. And it, it drove me to create that. Yes. And and uh, Amazing. so there is there is that balance of like bullying, taking over and, and your mental health, like being damaged by it. But there's also the the drive, that yeah. grind, like, hey, I'm going to prove you wrong. I'm going to keep working. I'm going to make this worthwhile. Yeah. And uh, not a lot of people have that. Not a lot of people. Oh, have dude, that. And, and you know, it's funny. It's like it's super primitive in the sense that. I think what you and I had in common is we – I wasn't, like, fucking, like, adoring the bands. Like, I wanted to be uh, – I respected them so much. I wanted to be among them. Right. You no. Know? That's, that's, that's the mentality, yeah. Yeah, and so my proximity to them back then, it was just like, oh, I got to meet so-and-so. It didn't mean that much to me after the fact. It was just a cool memory. But later as an adult, I tried looking back, like, why did I care so much when my other friends did? I'm like, well, dude, I'm just trying to, like – get glean anything off the experience that would get me one step closer to living that life of a creator 24 7 someone who gets to create write music make artwork you know and just be in that space i couldn't articulate that you know yeah. but it was like i just and then i and then you know as a kid you don't know that half of these people are are, are lunatics you know but it's like <laughs> but at the time you're just like this must be the person i'm looking for the the sage on my journey 
to kind of get me there. And even though oftentimes it's not, it, it that's what it represented. And like you said, my draw, my dude, I always talk about this. Like my heroes are artists that are still alive today, you know, and now it's different. Like now I kind of just look at them like, you know, awesome artists and all that. But I, when I was younger, I was like, I need to get to a point where they respect my work. Like when they look at me and they go, you, you like you done well. <laughs> like if there's a <laughs> hilariously fake ceremony where they kind of like bring you in and they kind of said you're one of type of thing, you know. And I know that's horseshit, but it, like something like that in my head always existed that I wanted people to know that I respect and love this so much to the point that I gotta be in there. I gotta be and show you that I could do it type of thing. And it's crazy because I don't even think about that so much now. But I thought about it forever, and it pulled me to where I am now, like you're describing. Same thing. Yeah, yeah. I was uh, when I was younger. There was a Cuban, a Cuban saying, um, "Dime, qui, <clears throat> dime con quién andas, y te diré quién eres," which means, "Tell me who you're hanging out with, and I'll tell you who you are." Yeah. And that, I, you know, that can be interpreted in many different ways. But the way <laughs> I interpreted it was basically, I want to, I, I admire those people and what they're doing. I want to be that, so I'm gonna go be there with yes. them because as long as i surround myself with success i will be successful super well said i used to get that told that in a scolding way but it, <laughs> exactly right? yeah i like the way you're saying it way more <laughs> yeah because you could take it as you know you're hanging out with a bunch of delinquents you're delinquent you know yeah. like it, it's not I, I tried to turn that around because yeah. i i think you know a lot of my friends growing up were kind of a drag and yeah. i hate to say it but they it's were true. just they would bully you or talk shit yeah. about whatever you're doing. They're not really doing anything. They're just doing oh. their working. And, you know, I wanted to surround myself with creatives. And, uh, you know, I, I love that. That feeling that you said you had when you're like, you wake up and you're like, ah, oh, this could go away any day. That's the grind. Mm -hmm. That's the hustle. That's the, I can't sit down because if I stop right now, it's over, you know? And, 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 and that hustle mentality, I don't want to just attribute it all to Miami. <laughs> but it definitely, it definitely helped growing Dude, up in Miami in that environment, you know? Hey, you're 100% right because there was always something new popping off. There was always someone leveling up their game down here. Nobody was loyal to anybody or anything. You know, when you thought you got – when you got getting comfortable and getting – you know, it's, that's as soon as you got the, you know, the rug pulled out from under you, you know. Like I always tell the story about um, how – uh, the guitar player from Darwin's Waiting Room, uh, Eddie, rest in peace, not to speak ill of the dead, but it's a true story. Uh, I was a 15, 16-year-old kid on stage because Darwin's Waiting Room let us open for them, and that, that was really cool. But um, they, I guess, like, they, we got delayed for our start for some reason that was not our control. Like, the sound guy wasn't right, something, you know? And we were saving our big song for the last song that, that made us look cool, the big song at the end. And they were telling us, you got to get off. That's it. Last song. Like, like, and then instead of letting us finish the song that we were on, dude, he came up from behind my set and pulled the, the plug out of my amp mid song. Wow. And I, back then I'm like, you fucking douche. But now I'm like, whoa, that's a dark motherfucker who would go to a 15 year old kid and do that in the, in front of so many people, dude. And I, and I used to fucking like hate him for that when I was a kid. And now I, I'm so lucky that he did that because you can't fuck with me now, dude. Like, I've had so many experiences like that, humiliated. I remember I popped a string on stage in my second ever show at Roses in the Beach. And we were playing with uh, uh, Lost and Endo. Uh, Endo, you know, was a band that always hooked us up. And uh, um, Lost played... And the guitar player was hanging right in front of me, saw my string pop right off. And, the, and he had his guitar right next to him. Like, dude, just hand me your guitar so I can finish the fucking song. I was like, no, dude. <laughs> and, and, and honestly, I, I don't blame him, you know. Yeah. Fuck, but at the same time, like, that guy was, like, in his 30s. I'm 15. You could have done it. You could have yeah. done it. And, and, uh, and, again, I'm grateful for that shit because, not, dude, nothing fucked with me more than shit like that growing up. So humiliating. I've been humiliated so many times that, like, nothing can fuck with me now. Yeah. So, yes, Miami is fucking awesome for that. <laughs> it is, man. You know, that whole environment with the bands, I, I, I even saw it with the beer industry. Because, you know, I started working in beer yeah. in Florida. And when I when I brought that, that uh, energy that I had from selling beer in Florida to California, it was overwhelming. These people didn't know what to do. 
Yeah. And like I remember going to Modern Times and I getting a call from the owner. He's like, "Hey man, you've doubled the LA sales in a month." I'm like, "Yeah, yeah. well, yeah." <laughs> What do you want from me? <laughs> Are you calling to yell at me or do you want me to keep selling beer? Go yeah. away. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it's that drive that Florida That's gives insane. people, man. It's it's nuts that the people out here are too high, man. They're too stoned. <laughs> so well, you got fun. like my the whole company of Skybound is from California, and I love that they are really good at dealing with high intensity and high pressure situations. They are mellow. They are like not that they're like they're not laid back, but they're like Yoda esque, you know what I mean? Like they just roll with it, you know. Whereas I'm always like, ah, like you said, I'm like, rrr, 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 like you know. And they, I have had them tell me like, oh, dude, don't worry, like we're good, man. Like it's gonna be okay. And I'm like, really? Are you sure? Because I gotta fucking do this and that. And, 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 I, and I, I'm learning to like channel that and use it when I need to because it's it's been so helpful for me. But also not fuck with their like state of mind and like their like perfectly oiled machine. Right. But it's interesting to hear you say that because sometimes I feel like I'm I'm the only one who feels that way. It's interesting. Yeah, dude. It's it's a uh, it's some, definitely something that we have from that growing up in that mindset. You mm -hmm. know, and you know you mentioned Tommy and and rest in peace, my homie. Uh, he, but he was one of those people that motivated me too into that mentality of let's do something let's yes. he was always the one dude tommy would wake me up like if we were sleeping like i would go visit him wake, get up it's 8 a.m i'm like what are you doing like, let's go let's yeah. go out i'm like what do you mean like what do you mean go out he's like let's go we gotta go do something i'm like all right and then we just go do stuff and that drive man that that passion i think is what makes successful weird, art man make successful star like stars there, there's the difference because there's artists there's a million artists and they're super talented and you see them on instagram like i i you know i have a bunch that i follow yeah but none of them are doing what you're doing none yeah. of them have had that drive to get connected with like a skybound situation yeah. uh and and it and there's also that you mentioned the the stigma of signing to something like skybound yeah, yeah for but, sure but i don't see it as a stigma and yeah. it's like the saying, the tell me who you're hanging out with, whatever. Don't look at it negatively. Look yeah, at yeah, it, yeah. The positives of being able to push your art to something like this. Yeah, dude, for sure, 100. percent And I couldn't be more proud. And it's, again, it's all good. Like, uh, it, it plays out all the time. There's a lot of that in, in energy that we encountered as kids as in that band scene. That still, I see it in the artists, like the individual artists themselves. There's a lot of like unspoken rules that you have to fucking follow you know like you can't approach a company because that's that's taboo that's rude it's not cool or whatever it is, or you can't like just uh ask someone to do a collaboration you can't do that you're like fuck you guys dude you fucking nerds man yeah like, you I, can't yeah exactly that's <laughs> exactly dude. like maybe you can't do it but i got shit done that way and i'm not like saying it in a braggadocious way i'm like what if that's part of my tool set why would i not use it you know, and not only that, like when I get to a point where things are super solid, I am going to fucking turn it around and I'm going to bring up the next guy and I'm going to make that the whole thing that Attack Peter is about is like, yes, fucking get after it. If somebody needs to tell me no, like we don't want to do it, we can't do it. Great, dude, it's all good. You know, it's not personal. But making those connections, being a human, like, you know, expressing your enthusiasm being energetic, dude. Like we we went through a year where any of one of us could have dropped dead. I hope that after this, like people come out of it with a lot less horseshit, you know, and realizing like how lucky we are to keep to being able to keep going and do the stuff that we love to do on a daily basis. And if you're not doing it yet, that there is like ways to get some of that passion into your life. And and sometimes you gotta go fucking rip it out of the sky, dude. Yeah. You know? Go rip it. Go grab the brass ring. Go uh, lose sleep. You know, yeah. I mean, I tell people that a lot. Like, they're like, oh, not not sleeping is unhealthy. Yeah, I get it. But I've spent many days when I'm working on something not sleeping and maybe pass out. Like, that's how I sleep. I passed out from working too mm -hmm. much. <laughs> and it's important. It's important to have that. So I, I appreciate what you're doing. I, you know, I've been trying to be supportive from the very beginning, even when yeah, I first oh, saw dude. you at the con, like I was like, "What the fuck? You're doing art? <laughs> That's awesome!" Um, and I actually I have a bunch of your prints framed in the house, so hopefully they're worth lots of money when you become a. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, but you know, here's something that we could talk about before we wrap it up. Like, yeah. 
you and I even like I approached you with an idea I had. Oh, I looked at it the other day. I have the art still. Yeah, man. I, I had an idea to do a TV show. I was hanging out at these cons with a lot of the Adult Swim people, and I was like, you know what? I can make something happen here. Yeah. And I sat down, I wrote a bunch of stuff, and you did all the concept art for it. Yeah, and I yeah. still think it's I still think it's potentially something awesome, you know? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it, it, it shows that, like, working with people. Huh? You never know. Put it together again. If you're still into it, put it together. Well, we can always throw it. I, I know people now. Oh, yeah. <laughs> think about it. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, man, it's it's. Dude, you never those... know. In fact, like like for real, put it together. Like look over it, see if you think it's 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 needs any work or anything now that it's been a couple of years, and send it back over to me. Like I'll at least pass it up so that you can have conversations. You never know. Yeah, man, because that, that I think the point of me like why I wanted to say it is not to bring it up I, like that. I know, like I know, I know you didn't. I just I, I, I wanted to help uh, people understand. Like if you have an idea. Just fucking try and do it and, and talk to people to try and do it. Like, I know there's always going to have – there's that barrier of you don't want to be embarrassed, you know, like yeah, yeah. like we were just talking about. You don't want to be like, hey, check out my idea. And they're like, that shit's crap. And then yeah. you're, like, devastated. You yeah. know what I mean? I, I recently even did it. I, I, I recently started doing art therapy with my wife because she draws a lot all the time. And I was, uh, I used to draw back in high school, but I'm not, I'm not good at it. Yeah. And But I decided, you know, let me sit down and – let me just draw something. Okay. And I, I drew a uh, corpse grinder from episode 200. Oh, cool. Yeah. And I was like, this is garbage. I'm embarrassed. I started like getting shakes. I'm like, I don't oh, want oh. anyone to see this. And oh. my wife's like, dude, I love it. Put it out there. I'm like, no. And then, but I put it out there because she told me to, and yeah. people responded positive. So like, we have to break oh, dude. mental barriers. Let me tell you what I used to tell my students. Cause that's, this was my job for 13 years. Cause they were kids having this feeling, and so you you kind of like expect that because they're not fully formed humans yet. And when they would make something amazing, like for them, you know, like or or sometimes just amazing. Period. I'd be like, "Yo, don't get too excited, bro. Do it again. Yeah, you know, do it again. Like do it again, or maybe it was just a fluke. You know, like don't get too hyped on it. Like you know, pat yourself on the back real quick. You know, take a minute. You know, send it to your mom, put it on Instagram, and then let's get back to it again." Same way, when they would do something that terrible, 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 I'd be like, don't get too low, dude. Don't get too fucking hard on it. Just you know, like m take some mental stock over what went wrong, what you hated, when did you feel it was going wrong, put it aside, move on to the next thing. And the idea was that if you get caught up in the momentary success or failure, you let it define and dictate the future. And that if you're too hyped on something, then the failure is going to come. And then you're going to be like double devastated because you were so high on it. And if you're – if you fail and you get way down on it, you'll never come out of it. And so that idea of if something sucks and, and uh, you know, I can't because – first of all, like, like don't take yourself so fucking seriously. Nothing that, nobody, nothing that you do matters that much anyway. Right. And, and yeah, seriously. And then I, t I would tell these kids, I'm like, no nothing that you do matters that much right now. Anything. Maybe when you're, if you're lucky in a few years, someone will care. No one cares right now. Perfect time to try some weird shit out. And then with this idea of like, they would do something, they would think it sucks. I would think it was really good because I'm thinking about, well, you're only like 13 or you're nine or whatever. This shit's pretty fucking awesome for your age. Post that shit online or show it to people. No, no, no. One thing I would tell them is, well, fuck you for like having the audacity to think that my opinion of it is not valid. Like, right. don't tell someone that you think, like, like for example, I used to do this when I was young, like I was younger. I was like, I would make something that thing was shit, and then either like a friend or a family, I'm like, oh my god, I love it. I'm like, eh. in my head, or or at worst case scenario, I would say out loud, eh, it sucks. You don't know what you're saying. Trust me, it sucks. <laughs> and, and that someone, a professor, taught me once, like. It's such a nasty thing to do because now instead of making it about your work and your disappointment with yourself, you've basically told that person that their opinion is invalid. And right. worst case scenario, if you make something that actually you do think sucks, if you follow step one, which is not r ruminating on it too long, just putting it out, moving on, you could even put it out as an example of like, man, I, this thing got the best of me. I liked where it was going, and then it kind of got away from me. And now with the 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 social media and everything, you put it out as an a uh, as a way to say, I'm gonna do another one. You know, check it out. Or if you're thinking about not doing something because you think you're gonna fuck up, just do it anyway. Look at this; it's not gonna be worse than this shit. And then move on to the next one. You know what I mean? So like, yeah. there's so much good judo you can get 
out of something like that. And it feels good. It feels good. I do. I, I threw away 40 prints yesterday. I'm doing a gig for a uh, for sideshow right now. And 40 of them just did not come out the wrong, the right way. And instead of like, just like sitting and thinking about it, I just grab this shit, fuck it, toss it. You know, I have a design that I did for Mondo of Godzilla versus Gigan. I was carving and I got halfway through the carving and I said, I cannot fucking turn this shit in. This is bad. And I showed it on my stream. Like, look how bad this shit is after I revealed the, the good one. But, you know. Yeah, it's practice. I, I, that's what I try and tell my wife sometimes when I see her struggling, like, with a piece. You know, she's like, ah, I don't know. I'm just like, look, it's just practice. You know, it's, it's like if you want to become a good basketball player, you're going to miss a bunch of shots. Yeah. You know, you're going to keep throwing the, the basket at the hoop. You're going to miss like 10 of them. Yeah. But eventually you get to the point where you're making a bunch of them in a row. Yeah. It's, it's the same with art. It's the same with anything creative, like music too. Like if you're going to create music, your first couple are going to suck. <laughs> <And> <laughs> that I've, there's no point that I've ever reached in my life. And I've had success in a lot of different areas in weird, hard to get areas. You know, there's no point I've ever reached where I felt I made it I'm right. good now. I'm good now. I'm good. Like I'm a good at what I do. I've never reached that. And so in, in our house, Gabby and I, we're always creating something. Like she's always making stuff. Um, she bakes. She does crafts. She does. We do all kinds of stuff. And uh, we have normalized, like intensely normalized, laughing at our fuck ups. Yeah. So that's that what you got to do. Never, yeah. There's never a, a down zone because she, you know, she came up the same way. We're like. You know, we were told like, like, you know, we had friends and quote unquote friends that made you feel like shit when you fucked up. And so like, you know, we've kind of decided, you know what? Fuck that, dude. We're just going to have a good time from now on. Oh, yeah, man. Well, that's a good place to end it for me. Totally. Uh, I love it. I love everything you're doing. Keep going. Yeah. Uh, everybody that's watching and listening, you go to store.skybound.com. You're going to see Peter's Daruma right up front. Yeah. Let's pre-order it now. Uh <laughs> I recommend you pre-order it now because it, it's. You, I know you're gonna say the bud. You know it's a little out of your budget. Maybe it doesn't matter. That thing's gonna be worth a lot more as he continues to grow as an artist and 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 the um, listening to your story about the importance of what a daruma is. That kind of shit is invaluable. Having yeah. that motivation at home, that that grind, that reminder to grind, to keep yeah. pushing, to keep working. Um, social media at attack, attack Peter. Peter everywhere. Uh, the Daruma is also massive, by the way. Look at that thing. That's a beautiful piece. Uh, I see the full display uh, on the website, too, with the flowers that you mentioned. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The base is going to be there. So it's a big boy. And like you said, it's the first of hopefully many. Um, I'm I'm always surprised what, when my stuff goes on the secondary market, what it goes for. So I think, like, I think, yeah, I think you're right. Like, if you're into collecting artwork and stuff like that, I think it's a rad piece to start with or to add to any collection. And like you said, it's in my mind, it's the first of many. So it'll be like issue one. There you go. Exactly. And that's how I see it. I mean, I, I, you can't see all of the things I have here, but I've got a ton of shit everywhere. <laughs> so, uh, I, and you know, who knows, maybe I'll never sell it and it's just all sentimental value. But yeah. to me, it fulfills my life to have that kind of stuff. It, it's memories. Oh, dude, I have so. like a, a $200 Godzilla figure that I look at every day. And if I divide the price over how many days I look at it and go, fuck yeah. Yeah, it's, exactly. It's valuable. Exactly, man. <laughs> uh, and your show, you say you have a show you're doing yeah. with in collaboration with Skybound. Is it collaborating yeah, with them? Or? It's just Attack Peter on YouTube. Like, uh, But yeah, that's where we do. That's kind of like our outward face to the world. Uh, every week on, on YouTube, Thursday night, 7.30 p.m. Eastern, 4.30 Pacific. My wife, Gabby, and I, my dog, Wonton, we get on there and we have a good time. We bring in uh, different guests. Uh, we drop brand new prints stuff and we make stuff there uh we have like every like exclusive drops there we do tons of stuff there to make it worthwhile even if you can't stand our our personality and our faces if you like the artwork and you like collecting it it's the best place to get it like we drop secret links in the chat things sell out super fast then i go the next day on instagram and i said i wish i had enough to make available for you guys today i don't they sold out on the stream so it's an awesome place to to just kind of hang yeah that's awesome man that's, that's I'm, good. So check out the YouTube channel. Go attack Peter on the socials. Go to Skybound. Pre-order the Daruma toy. And brother, thank you so much for your time, man. I appreciate it. Love you, buddy. We'll, do, we'll, we'll love you too, man. We'll do this again. Anytime. All right, brother. Take care. All right, buddy. Later.